and we're going to talk about Richard Hanania for a little bit. Um, I, I, I'm not particularly eager to talk about this. I have to admit, I am. Um, I feel like I'm talking about. I'm going to talk about this a little too early. Although I'll tell you why I, I've gotten over that. So this breaking story about Richard Hanania that we're going to talk about, um, and I don't like to talk about breaking news because uh, you, you don't have the time and and you don't have. Um, all the information and the commentary that comes afterwards, but uh, but I'm pretty comfortable that I've got enough to say here, given uh, given what I know, and kind of given what Richard has posted since this news has come out, that there's enough to enough to talk about. This is not a pleasant topic. The only reason I'm doing this is that I have for a year now, two years maybe talked very positively about Richard Hanania and encourage you to read him, encourage you to go to Substack. I have retweeted his, uh, some of his tweets. I've retweeted a lot of his tweets. Um, so I feel uh, obligated to let you know what's, what's going on with him um, and, uh, and to, uh, to kind of um, think aloud, if you will, about lessons learned from this. All right. So let's get to it, right? So Richard Hanania, as you know, is, as you probably know, is a public intellectual out there. He has his, uh, he has started his own think tank. He is a scholar at the Salem Center at the University of Texas. He is, he is taught at the University of Austin. You remember that university that, that uh, was started uh, as an alternative university. Uh, he has published in the New York Times, in the Washington Post. He has delivered lectures to the Federalist Society. He's been invited to do a uh, teacher course at Stanford uh, later this year. He has got a book coming out that uh, on on woke culture. He is uh, he's been on Tucker Carlson twice. He is uh, you know has become an incredibly incredibly successful. Uh, intellectual uh, on the right, uh, he's he's on his podcast. He's had you know world famous people. Elon Musk has uh, favorably uh, tweeted about him. Uh, uh, his book has blurbs from Peter Thiel and and many others. Um, uh, and uh, anyway, he's an up and coming rising star. Uh, on uh, what you would kind of consider the right, although again, as you'll see, he, he's not easy to uh, easy to uh, pigeonhole into a particular place. Uh, anyway, so rising star, uh, uh, lots of uh, lots of interesting, uh, uh, lots of stuff. Uh, uh, he's written a lot of stuff. He's published a lot of stuff. Um, and uh, anyway, yesterday, uh, the Huffington Post. Not a publication I read, but in this case, um, I, I you know re read the article. Uh, the Huffington Post had an expose on uh, uh, Richard Hanania, revealing that uh, in uh, about ten years ago, you know, somewhere around from two thousand eight, probably until two twenty twelve, during that period, Richard Hanania uh, used uh, the persona of Richard Hoste. H O S T E, um, and it was a regular poster and a regular blogger and a regular writer of articles on pretty much every racist, every racist um, uh, website out there. I mean, some of the worst, most horrible places that you could imagine. Uh, I'm not going to mention names, but it just, just really bad stuff. Um, uh, he, you know, uh, this Richard Hoste, Richard Hanania, now we know, uh, was advocating for anything uh, from uh, against a mixing of the races uh, to, um, uh, to basically uh, uh, sterilizing uh, anybody with an IQ below 90, right? IQ below 90, and, and of course, as part of that, Mentioning and highlighting the fact that that would in, that would be mostly black people. That is that that this involved mostly blacks. Um, you know, he his his rants, his essays, his articles, his posts, his comments. Um, 
are now well documented. They're out there, uh, and yeah, I mean, this guy, this guy was an out and out, unequivocal, you know, horrible racist uh, of of the worst kind, a, a defender of white supremacists. Now, what's interesting about Hanania is that you know whether you want to call him white or not is is questionable. Um, uh, Hanania is uh, is a is a Christian Arab uh, from uh, half Palestinian, half I think either Lebanese or Jordanian or Syrian. I can't remember, but but uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, and um, he's, he's not your standard what you would consider standard by I don't know whose definition, but wh- whatever it means, uh, standard white person. Uh, but uh, this is who he was. This is between 20, 2008 and 2012. Uh, I mean, he was the, some of the expo- expounded some of the most ugly, um, racist ideas that one uh, really can imagine, uh, and, and hobnobbed and was uh, cited by Richard Spencer and and uh, you know all the big names on the. Uh, on the uh, racist right, on the racist, I don't know, right, left, on the, uh, on the, on the racist spectrum. Um, and uh, w- was part of that entire, that entire community, I guess you would call it, that ca- the entire world. Um, and uh, again, uh, as ugly as it gets, right? As ugly as it gets. And then it looks like he stopped, right? And I kind of went to school. He got a he got he's, he got a law degree. He got it. He went to uh, got a, univ- a, a BA. He got a, a law degree. He then got a PhD um, uh, from all from uh, top notch universities. He had a, a postdoc. He had a postdoc at um, uh, at Columbia University. So he he fit into academia quite well uh, in, in his postdoc. Uh, he, he, I guess his dissertation was on American foreign policy and uh, the, the, the inadequacies of American foreign policy, much of which uh, his critique of American foreign policy I agree with, much of which I don't, but much of which I do. Um, and um, he reemerged, if you will, with using his real name, uh, Richard Hanania, uh, sometime uh, just before COVID, but really became a big hit during COVID. Uh, he wrote... The first piece that really got him attention uh, was a piece on why liberals uh, uh, are winning, why liberals are everywhere, why liberals dominate, why the left dominates. And his conclusion was, I mean, really two things. Uh, One is uh, they care more, they're more engaged, they work harder, they Get out there and and do stuff. They're engaged. They 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 they, they actually they actually show up, if you will. Uh, they care about ideas, if you will. And um, and the second one is, he, you know, he argued they're smarter, they're better educated, they're better connected, um, and uh, those two things explain why the left dominates uh, American cultural institutions. That's the first piece I, I read of his, and to a large extent, I thought he was right, and uh, and it was a it was I thought it was a really good piece, and that's the first time I started engaging with Hanania, not knowing anything about this past. He obviously never revealed it and never expressed it. The second piece that really uh, was a was a made his a big name for him was a piece on civil rights law, on how civil rights law led to uh, today what we know as DEI. Uh, and led led to large extent to woke culture. Again, I thought it was an excellent piece. It was uh, and it was um, it was not completely new, but it was a it was an integration and a in a presentation that was uh, new and I thought important and uh, and true. Uh, the you know and and, uh, and and a good article, one of the best I'd seen, um, one of the best I'd seen on the topic. Uh, over the over the next uh, few years, he picked up a lot of subscribers. He's got twenty thousand uh, Substack subscribers. He's got a, a Substack account. Uh, he's got a lot of followers on Twitter. He's uh, doesn't do well, I think, on YouTube and other platforms. But at least on those platforms, he's done phenomenally well. And as I said, he is part of the Salem Center. He is part of um, he is part of um, 
uh, you know, the the the, um, uh, the University of Austin, and he is very very well entrenched within the uh, this world of uh, you know right of center. But he's not typical right of center. This is this is what's interesting, right? And this is what I have to say it fooled me, right? Even though there were signs, there were signs, and I'll talk about those signs in a minute. He's pro immigration, very pro immigration, very uh, very very. Um, he, he expressed uh, he, he has expressed in his at least from what I've seen uh, disdain for the Republicans' focus on immigration, for the Republicans' focus on uh, keeping people out. He is pro-abortion. Now, that might turn out to be consistent with his pro-eugenics old views from uh, from 10, uh, from 10, 15 years ago, uh, but he's pro-abortion. Um, he's ve- he was very anti-Trump and anti um, anti uh, the whole MAGA phenomena, which, and I thought in a smart way. And he was also, while well, he started out, he's supposedly an expert on foreign policy, he started out being tentatively uh, uh, sympathetic to Russia. He quickly flipped and became quite, uh, quite uh, strong on Ukraine, very critical of the right. Um, and uh, anyway, a, a lot of very appealing views. But there was always something about his writing. There was always something that kind of always snuck in about him that I have to admit I didn't pay enough attention to. And I will try never to make that mistake again. Um, you know, so even though he, he, he had some really good articles and some, some really creative stuff and some original thinking, things that snuck in were things about IQ. And generally, I think now that anybody who talks about IQ a lot uh, is probably hiding some real racist, uh, real racist agenda. I just think that uh, the discussion of IQ is so silly and so primitive and so um, uh, superficial that it's hiding something deeper. It's hiding something deeper if you're really, really, really focused on that. So he, he, he kept mentioning IQ, and that kept coming up. And IQ turns out to be really, uh, among so many people, just another word for black people, right? Low IQ equals black people, and therefore we can discriminate against them because they were low IQ people. Uh, the other thing was that once in a while he would mention characters who are unequivocally, clearly, unambiguously racist. Mark in the chat means a sailor. Sailor is one of these people that, and once in a while, Hananya. So I didn't, I didn't know who Sailor is. I had to look it up today and figure this out. But uh, it turns out Sailor's, yeah, one of these, one of these alt-right, uh, explicitly racist website writers and so on. The other one, uh, the other one is uh, Ron Unz, U-N-Z, who um, is very active in Republican politics in California who is, uh, has run for office several times in California, done fairly well in California um, as, uh, as a writer, and who is, um, who is a, a, a unapologetic, anti-Semite, Holocaust denier, uh, just a mishmash of a lot of things. Because on the one hand, uh, he like Hanania, celebrate diversity. On the other hand, the Hanania hates blacks and, 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 and oh, see, appears to hate blacks, and Unz hates Jews, not, not appear, hates Jews. Um, is, a, is a Hitler, I wouldn't say sympathizer, but apologist. He's got a whole thing about Hitler's misunderstood and Hitler didn't know about the Holocaust, and, which didn't really happen, and Hitler was really a good guy, and all this, right, all this stuff. This is Unz, this is, a big shot in Republican politics in California. Oh, well, I wouldn't say a big shot, but at the margins, right? At the margins of Republican politics in California. But has run for office several times and is on, you know, marginally for a Republican pretty well. 
So, uh, so uh, today I was thinking, all right, I'm, I'm going to wait and see what Richard Hananya actually writes. Because, you know, if he comes out with this statement of something like, I've changed, I repudiate all those views, I was wrong, I, I'm sorry to have, I don't know, if he just comes out and, and, and apologizes and everything, I, I would say, okay, it's a, do I believe him, that these hints, that these indications maybe hasn't changed, it, that's one thing. Um, so I was curious, what is he gonna, what is he gonna do? Well, he's only posted one thing since this article hit. And by the way, he knew the article was coming because Huffington Post contacted him and asked him for comments. Right? Asked him for comments. So he knew it was coming, so he could have prepared. So the one thing he posts today is an article... It's almost like a story because it, it, I don't think this is, I don't think it actually is an expression of something that actually happened. I don't know. I, he mentions a lot of names here and I don't know if these names are real. I don't know if this event ever happened. But it, it's something where he, uh, it's, it's, it's called Ron Unz Confronts the Far Right. And basically, so in response to the Huffington Post article about him being a racist, he basically posts something where Ron Unz goes in front of a bunch of racists, clear-cut, unequivocal racists, very influential racists. He names names here. Again, I don't know if these are real names. Maybe they are. One of them is a former White House official, James Felix. And Ron is uh, defending, is, is saying, oh, you racist, you all, you, you know, you all, this is dumb. Um, uh, ethnic diversity is a good thing. And your real problem, hint, hint, doesn't really say it, but your real problem is those people who've been around here since 1619, right? Why 1619? Because of the whole 1619 project about slavery, blacks. So Ernst is basically saying, your real problem is blacks. It's not diversity. We love diversity. Diversity is great. Diversity is what made this country great. Diversity is not a problem. This is what Hanania puts up today. And of course, Hanania is bored by the racist, but he thinks, uh, but he think Ron Unz is really interesting and fascinating. Now you go go to the Unz Review, U N Z, if you, if you you might want to shower afterwards, and you can see the horrible, horrific, disgusting anti-Semitic stuff that he puts up there. So Hanania is basically saying, "Yep, that's me. I might be more, I'm more sophisticated now." I don't actually argue directly for eugenics. I'm more sophisticated now. I don't directly uh, uh, argue for, I don't know, white supremacy because maybe I, 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 think, I think there's value in a diverse society. I still hate blacks, he says. And uh, I mean, he's basically implicitly saying. And, you know, by association with Unz, he's saying, I still hate, I hate Jews. But, yeah, what they said about me is true. So, uh, that's why I, I felt like I could speak about this today, because it, it seems to me pretty unequivocal what's going on here. Um, the guy is clearly a, a, a racist, even if he's a more sophisticated racist now than he was 10, 15 years ago. He, he still is a racist, even though he couches it now in a, a much more intellectual uh, framing. He is a racist in spite of the fact that he is, and this is, I guess, true of, 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 of racists, uh, really, really smart. He couldn't have written what he's written if he's not. Really, really smart and actually correct about a bunch of stuff. That is, you can be a horrible you know, racist. You can be uh, truly horrific and disgusting and still be smart and still write things that are true. I don't quite get how that happens. 
I don't. I have to admit, I find that uh, a, a little bit of a, of a, of a you know, a cognitive dissonance. But I guess you can't really keep it up. And, and this like story about, this is called Ron Uns Confronts the Far Right. I guess he published it in March. Reveals that you can't, you can't escape it. And I've seen a bunch of stuff, and these are the stuff that I don't retweet of Hananias, that seems just a little off to me, that seems just a little suspicious to me. And I guess you can't keep up the facade for very long. And even if it might have happened, even if the Huffington Post had not done this, this expose, if you will, uh, he would have been, uh, he would have been, uh, he would have been discovered. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, Hanani, if anything, was a big, uh, was, 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 looked like he was a serious DeSantis fan, uh, because he's a huge anti-woke person. Uh, his new book is all about DEI and woke and, 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 and how evil it is and, uh, how it needs to be combated. And he was uh, far more sympathetic to, to, uh, DeSantis than he was, uh, to, uh, Trump. Um, but God, um, anyway, I, I, he fooled a lot of people. Uh, Steven Pinker was on a show. Mark Andreessen was on a show three times, uh, and, um, and, and so on. His, his new book is about woke. So it's all about woke. So, uh, you know, maybe he thought it was in retreat partially because of what he was doing in order to combat it. I also think it's in retreat. It's factual reality that it's in uh, retreat it doesn't mean it isn't still damaging it doesn't mean it's still not out there but it's clearly in retreat you saw that and i've said this many times in virginia you saw that in san francisco you saw that in minnesota uh you've seen it over and over again but anyway I, we're not here to debate um debate uh whether woke is in retreat or not but hanania is um anyway it'll be interesting to see what happens now It'll be interesting to see what happens, uh, whether people will distance them themselves from him, whether his affiliation, various affiliations will be severed, uh, whether uh, some people on the right will defend him, and if so, who will defend him? Um, yeah, Barry Weiss was one of the people who was affiliated with him in one way or another. I, again, I don't know how strongly, it's hard to tell. Again, he taught it. He taught it. Austin University of Austin. But I don't know the Barry Weiss. How how involved Barry Weiss is there? I just don't know. Um, it, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what, what does Mark Andreessen say. What does Peter Thiel say? These are all people named in the article. Uh, what is uh, what is uh, what is uh, Barry Weiss say? Uh, you know, so far nothing. I've been surprised. Um, even uh, people like, I mean, it's interesting because the, the spillover is pretty wide. Uh, pe even like Matthew Inglesis, who's a left, right, left of center, who uh, had some exchanges with Hanania that seemed fairly friendly or positive. Um, he at least has distanced himself from Hanania on Twitter. But he's like the only s person I, I've seen so far who, you know, who uh, uh, was called out, who's actually said something about Hanania.